Rachel. How are you? Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. So this is a better this is a better meeting time for you, right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so um Tommaso couldn't join because he, he it's it's his morning like it is for me and he suddenly had people in his office. He had some um, customers, I think. So he had to step out and um, I promised to just update him with anything. And I'm not really sure because I've I've never um, only once I ran an alumni call at this hour and I'm I have no idea like who's going to show up. <laughs> okay. So how many people showed up last time? Last time there were 15. At this time? Oh, 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 no, sorry. You mean when I ran it in the morning? It was a different sort of call. It was open, I think, to the whole community. I can't remember because I only did it once and there were very few people actually because um, I don't re really remember when, why, and I don't really know what it depends on and um, the the sort of risk with the digital um with the digital facility to actually the ease with which people connect they can also you know say they will come and then for some reason there's something that happens so it's very easy to get lots of confirmations and then people don't actually show up so it's always like a, a gamble and wow. Wow. i think that if there's just one person then it's even even just one person shows up it's worth it because it, there's a chance for connecting and and you know something might come out of it. So we'll, we'll see, some people might jump in later. And I, I was actually had such, um, such a messy two days um, until now that I, I didn't prepare anything other than what I've shared into the groups now. So I don't have any real updates. So I'm just open to hearing like, um, if you have any questions that you are sitting with, um, do you have any suggestions? Because I'm, I'm not really, really focused this morning, so I'm going, I can pull out my other notes. But what I've tried to do ongoing is just cross-post all, all the updates and news in the Mighty Networks and also on Facebook, because I, I know some people kind of are not in the Mighty Networks, and I still wanted to make sure they, they have an opportunity to step in if they want to. So it looks like we've filled most of, uh, most of the spaces, and now it's just a question of, being able to to grab people, make sure they're sending in a video recording, and yeah. make sure everyone who's volunteered to do something knows what they're doing. So uh, this is also why I'm here to kind of explain, like, um, or to try to support where their questions. And of course, it's it's all an experiment. So um, we kind of created. I had created a sh uh, document where I asked if anyone wanted to volunteer to like hold. Uh, a small management role and so we have a few people have you seen that document uh it's the same one where speakers and hosts are there right the timeline one uh hang on let me just give you the link because maybe i'm not sure sometimes i get muddled like who got what um where i think i posted this at some point um hang on a sec let me get into the chat uh oops please Mm, can't find my chat, but oh, I'm in share. So okay, wait. I need to get to the chat button. Um, let me share the link here. Paste. So this is a document. I think I put it out into the group because we just needed um, a few people to be actually holding the just to make sure uh, to help coordinate. So we said that there were a few major tasks to be looking at, like um, filling the slots, the time slots, chasing people for materials, managing Q&A, uh, communicating with the community, storing, managing videos, uh, doing an inventory of the resources. So some people put their names in. Um, and it's just that it's, uh, I'm still wondering like how, how do we activate people? So sometimes it means actively chasing um, so if you, if you, if you save this document or pin it somewhere, you can see, um, it's got all the links at the top. So it has all the reference documents, which is the overall timeline mapping. Um, mm. then the, the Q and A form that was set up to, to collect questions, actually that didn't work very well because nobody, 
nobody actually took, except Liz, nobody took the time, I think, let me check if anyone else has answered, but I think no one has taken the time to answer that. And maybe um, people are just, so I'm looking at questions and queries. Yeah, it's still just with one person who's answered it. So that didn't really work. And yes, mm -hmm. we'll... So how would this Q&A uh, survey help us? Well, in the beginning, um, it was an idea from, hang on, what's his name? Um, it was Abhijit's. Abhijit, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember him saying it, yeah. And um, so he kindly set it up and he thought it might be a good idea to kind of uh, collect people's specific questions. And then that would have maybe given also clues to the speakers as to what they should be addressing, right? But I think the, the time span was too short for this. And also I'm thinking because everyone's like really busy with other things and catching their attention to actually do this was maybe, uh, I don't know whether we communicated it wrong or just didn't get people's attention. So it's the q and uh, at this point, I'm thinking it's probably something that's going to happen uh, during the event, like just q and is going to come up and uh, people have to kind of improvise around that and that's fine too. Because that the, it would have been very useful if we had a lot of time to gather the Q's and A's um, actually, no, just the questions. And then all the speakers would have had the questions that are relevant to their topic and they would have time to maybe uh, research more on that or develop more of that. But then I think the time was short. Um, people are bombarded with surveys on every side, you know, from our community, from I get so many surveys. Uh, I create so many surveys for my work too. So I think people are a little bit tired. And I think even if I, I too, I looked at it and I couldn't come up with something. And I think my questions will probably be inspired on the spot by what is being said. So it'll, it'll just be an emerging, um, just an emerging kind of dynamic. So we tried it, but maybe, maybe we will actually come, end up with a, with a Q and A afterwards based on what was happened. Maybe we can transform like the, um, whatever happens during the 24 hours into Q and A or some, some form of digest that can then be shared back to the community and be useful. So yeah, the Q and A. Yeah. yeah sorry to distract. Yeah. So I was thinking I like, so Q and A usually, okay. That was a good idea to help the speakers actually, uh, improve based on the questions people might have. Hi, Carlo. Hey, hello. Hi. Hello, Carlos. We're speaking about the, the Q&A that um, Abhijit created, and there was just one person responded to it. So now uh, oh, I was well, giving well. his, his uh, insights on that. Yeah, okay. So based on what happened to now, so what I was thinking is probably there can be a separate Q&A session because the dynamicity involved here is there might be some speakers who just send a recording and probably they'll not be available at that hour to answer any Q&A. Oh. So probably sometime in the future after the 24-24 event, probably we can all get together for like a couple of hours and then have a Q&A for all 24 steps. So we can... Someone can manage it and say, okay, step one, anyone has any questions to whoever uh, presented, then we can just try to manage it that way. That's nice. I like that suggestion. I think that's good. Um, because then, yes, I still think Q&A is very valuable. And it's just maybe the timing, maybe the format this time, it didn't kind of, it didn't really plug into what's needed at the moment and what people have potential for. So. Yes, we could right. be just um, keep it there because I think it's a good format and we can, I like this suggestion of, so maybe one thing we could do during, during the event and as part of the hosting is to um, collect those maybe. One way to do that would be like while, while the recording of a presentation is running or while someone is actually presenting, maybe we could ask people to type any questions they have into the chat and that way we always save the the, the chat content and that way we'll already have our cues and our, our questions at least and that can be I like the idea of using that as a basis for um, a follow-up session where 
we can kind of look at that. Yeah, because the way I see it, I think the Q&A sessions are going to be uh, more informative for uh, everyone participating in this. So I think that we will see more participation in Q&As compared to this because of the time zone problems. Uh, yeah, that would be the place where many people might attend and they might ask questions irrespective of their were present for each of those uh, 24 steps or, or not. Right. So, sorry. Um, Hi, by the way, I'm Akubo. Hello. Nice to meet you. Um, uh, Gagan, is that your name? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, okay. So, um, so who, who wrote the Q and the form? Ab Abhishek? Ab Abhishek, I guess. Oh, but he's not here, right? No. No. So I'm, I'm trying to see like who signed up, who said they would come, but I'm not. Mm. I'm not really sure like who's supposed to come because I, um, mornings work different from the evening. So uh, Tommaso was supposed to attend, but he couldn't. He had like he had an emergency meeting and we had Niraj um, from the uh, healthcare boot camp who, who, who did say he would attend. But I don't know what happened. Oh, okay. Sent a reminder yesterday and a few other people said yeah, maybe okay. Wayne, it's Andres, Chelsea, Pavel, and Ben said they might come. So not yeah. sure whether they forgot or they weren't able to. Yeah, okay. Well, my question was, so just to make, make sure I, I understand, <clears throat> saying like at the end of the, of the meeting, of the 24 hours, we're gonna run a q and is that, is that what you're saying, like a general? Q and A for everyone. Yes, it was just a suggestion because the initial idea for the form, uh, what Richel was mentioning, uh, was Abhijit wanted to gather all these uh, questions from people who have who are having problems with these twenty-four steps, and yeah. then just sending it to all the speakers who would potentially improve their sp uh, speeches uh, or presentation based on these Q and As we have, based on the questions we have. That was the idea behind it, but uh, looks oh, like it was okay. not very successful because not many people answered, many, many people took the survey. So yeah, and also having this Q&A every hour, right? So not everyone will be available at that time. So we can just consider it as a presenting event where people come and present and have a separate event sometime later where everyone gathers and then they can ask questions on all 24 steps. Someone can. Oh, okay, yeah, so that would be like, what would the, that would be like, what, 25th hour or 26th well, hour? Well, yeah. Oh, were you thinking like just after or on site? No, no, on uh, another day, another day, probably after a week. Yeah, when oh, we recover. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it I've just seen like Chelsea um, connected. Chelsea, can you hear us? Uh, yes. Hello. Uh, hi. Oh, oh, am I not muted? I was just checking if I was muted. <laughs> no, we can hear you. We can't see you, though. Okay. Yeah, it's like 3 a.m. here. So. Oh, my goodness. Oh, thank you for, for getting up for this. This is nuts. <laughs> I, actually, I actually couldn't fall asleep until like 2, so it's all good. Oh, you couldn't fall asleep until 2, and then you, you put a, an alarm clock and you woke up? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm so I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> so we were. That's how it always works. Oh, that's that's. Uh, so yeah, so I'm just here um, listening to what um, what are all the details uh, for the speakers for presenting. So. Right. So we were we were kind of going through the the sort of topics that we we had created. Um, um, kind of a mini management sheet which we shared into the group and some people stepped into roles for being accountable to um, just just be monitoring and stewarding some parts of the event and one one thing that had um, suggested in the beginning by Abhijit was to create this uh, uh, um, Google form to collect any sort of questions people might have previous to the event and then maybe use that as a basis for speakers to also know what to address. But then the, 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 the Google form didn't work very well because not hardly anyone answered it. So we thought what would be a better way to 
to actually look at um, creating a Q&A that would be useful also beyond just the event. So uh, Gagan said maybe we could, um, people could, as they listen to the live or the recorded presentations, uh, jot down their questions and then we could collect all of these and then address them maybe in a follow-up event so that then we're just answering um, questions. So we could either, so there are two ways we could ask people to either send them in, but another more direct way would be to ask people to type them into the chat during the event, because then when we save the chat, we would already have them directly. And I think it's always easier to capture something in the moment than actually chase up people afterwards, because once the event's gone, I think there's going to be a bit of dispersion and some people are just going to be pulled back into whatever, you know, their daily um, craziness is. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that we'll get more questions after, like during the presentations, because yes. it will st it will stimulate people, um, you know, the questions in their head as we're going through it. I think so too. So we can, um, as part of the hosting, we can explain for those who don't know how to use the chat. And I think it's always really useful to have this um, parallel channel for people to be, you know. Um, Pinning, pinning down their questions. And sometimes people also send links to websites or references like reading references and videos. So the, the chat is usually a very good um, space for, for just capturing things that are emerging as other people speak without interrupting the flow. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Great. Um, so um, can you each remind me like what, what sort of roles have you taken on? Because I, I don't have a uh, like a an immediate. So Chelsea, you're doing speaking and hosting, right? Uh, yes, yes. And um, I did email you. Did you? So I'm put down for LTV as well. Did you guys need me for that? That'd be great because uh, okay. we'll be traveling, and he said he could do one hour live, and he wasn't sure. He said if we need emergency extra recordings for LTV and COCA, he could do them, maybe, but if, you, if you're able to confirm, um, that would be great. Okay, yes, um, I can definitely do them. Uh, like when I said in the email, it would be more based off the book with mm -hmm. some examples, because I haven't really got that far in the, yes. you know, okay. in the steps, but I've been, I've been listening to the book and I've been reviewing it and I'm gonna come up with a presentation that kind of, uh just reminds us what the step is mm. and how to calculate it and everything so that's cool yeah that's that's great i think um obviously not everyone i'm thinking there's also this paradox right so people who who are very familiar with the further the, the higher steps the ones that are further up along the journey probably don't have even bandwidth to be participating so actually we would need to know like who's running a really successful business and how do we get that person into this event. So I'm, I'm suddenly remembering, I have a, a fellow boot camper from the teacher, the teacher um, boot camp, and he's, he's been running like so many boot camps since he took the teacher training that he would be a, a, an amazing speaker. I'm going to try and reach out to him personally, point blank and say, Mike, will you come speak? But he's so busy, but he would be wonderful because he's done. I think he's probably the person who's gone through the 24 steps more times than anyone. Really? Um, I, I went to see his workshop last August. He came to Rome and he had a workshop with 50 people. And he, was, he went through the whole um, 24 steps in three days. And he's just, he's, he knows it so well. It's, it's incredible. So he would be great. I, I'm going to try and reach out to him. He's always been very interested in the alumni community, but he doesn't have much time. So I'm going to reach out to Mike. Yeah. Hey, I, one thing I was wondering about is like, we're, we don't have to feel like, um, like ob ob obligated sort of, um, sort of like to explain each step, like, and teach it necessarily, um right we we can like just share our experience um applying that step to our own projects um because 
that, that that's something that I, I was struggling a bit with my video because I, I didn't like explain it in very in a lot of, like, in much detail, but I just basically try to um, explain how I used it for my own project and what was my experience applying it. Yes, I, I think like the, the original idea was that, and I think it's very valuable if someone has this direct feedback, like I tried this and this is what worked, or this is what I didn't actually understand, and, or this is my insight. Yeah. That, that was like the, the, um, the original idea, but then I also know some people want to help and, and come and speak, but they, they don't necessarily have the practical application of that step. So then in that case, maybe we can just start the, yeah. the dialogue on um, uh, some kind of a re revisitation of the step and then whoever's there might just, you know, I'm thinking some people might have not made the commitment to speak or not even made a tangible commitment to participate, but they might jump in and they might know a lot about that step and say, oh, yeah. you know, so that's why we're leaving it very, very right. open as a dialogue, as a chat sort of thing. So it's not a conference. Yeah one's teaching anyone else we're, we're basically sharing thoughts around the framework so okay. i think yeah. to make it work we need to because we're iterating and we're experimenting this thing we don't really have a formula so if in the future we get very expert of this and very good maybe we can say yeah this is the format that works and it has to be this way and it'll all be um with one kind of a structure but i think for now we can just see what works, and I think many times in a community, what, what actually happens can be really unexpected. So I'd like yeah. to just leave it really, really open. I think it's, it's also the only way to make it sustainable because if we say, like, no, you have to come with uh, your personal case and bring insights, then probably we wouldn't actually even manage to pull it off and have someone speak for each slot. So I was. I was a little puzzled because one of the first recordings we received was literally someone, it sounded almost like they were reading from the book <laughs> and was thinking, oh no, what do we do with this? And um, I think the thing is that once we have the recordings, we could also um, decide whether to use them or not. And I think it can always be a good starting point because I'm not that familiar that if I get, if I get reminded about some aspects of the steps it might it might just in that moment spark a new idea about oh actually i did apply this and this is what happened mm -hmm. i mean the I, videos the purpose of the videos is like to use them in case that the speaker is not able to so uh, to it's listen, it's multi right? yeah there's several reasons for trying to get get hold of recordings beforehand one is that some people might feel more uh, ha happier to actually try and pitch something and get it ready into a shape and they might feel more uh, mm -hmm. confident in having, even if they're there in person, to actually send the video, uh, broadcast that as a starting point. And one of the main ideas was also that some people are keen to speak on one topic, but it just doesn't fit their time zone because it's going to be like 3 a.m. Yeah, or true. Or 4 a.m. Yeah. Or, or they really want to contribute, but they'll be traveling that day. And yeah. I also suggested that if, if there's yeah. like a gap and there's not, uh, or if the speaker doesn't show up quite simply, you know, right. if recording, then yeah. at least we have something to, to be able to fall back upon and to, to serve as a starting point. Yeah. Sure. That's why. So I had a few questions to share. So I was just going through that document we just shared with me uh mm -hmm. responsibility and accountability document so in that uh i was just going through that table which is there so who is responsible for what mm -hmm. uh so did we all agree before that uh, whoever is hosting the session so it's their responsibility to get behind the speakers and get the videos or just get the confirmation if they're speaking live or sending a recording or are we using someone else's recording is that what we agreed on so what was agreed um yeah there's there's a little bit of um kind of gray zones so tomazo took on the the 
the task of actually chasing up all the speakers. So what I did was last week I sent, I first sent some instructions for speakers and that they needed to get a recording ideally in by the 17th, which is, uh -huh, 17th, yeah. and I hope that's going to happen, but I know we won't get everything by then. And so Tommaso is preparing to chase up today or tomorrow with all of the speakers, but it's also, uh, it's, it's difficult to hit the right balance. So if we have all the hosts chasing up as well, then people might feel like they're getting too, too many prompts. I'm not sure. So Tomazo's chasing up, then maybe we could have a third. I like the idea of the host actually stepping into um, just holding, holding that slot. So maybe we could have a third. So maybe Tomazo can send a prompt and then we can ask each host to chase up their speakers as a third, um, a third wave of just following up maybe. What do you think? Mm. Yeah, so I would I would really like I mean somewhere a document uh, with the status of where Tomazo is with each one of them. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm open for all the hosts to get behind the the speakers and then like just quickly can check. Okay, is Tomazo communicating with you? Do you, I just wanted to know what mode are you doing? Or probably as you said, it might be too much for the speakers if we all try to talk to them. Probably we should get the status from Tomazo first. So okay. what has everyone uh, responded or where are we? And mm -hmm. then probably we can like distribute and uh, talk to the respective speakers. Okay. Because the way I see it uh, for the day of the event. So what mm -hmm. we need is in the timeline. So we know who is talking and who are the hosts. And the mm -hmm. host to know they need to do step one, step two, step three. So step one is the uh, speaker speaking live. If yes, then everything is fine. You just manage it. If he is not speaking live, does he have an even uh, recording? If yes, then you just play the recording. This if he doesn't actually, have that. Um, hang on, I'm trying to do a screen share because I think we have maybe this document that you are alluding to. It's actually, we have it already. Let me just, um, oh, I'm getting muddled. Hang on. Um, wait, I'm going to stop share and look for that document. So we have timeline mapping, which I don't know, maybe this is what you meant, but it's not, uh, it's not, can you see this? So we have, we have um, the, the times, we have um, who's speaking when and who's hosting when. So this is kind of, but we don't have a breakdown for each person, we just have the slots. So what I have asked Tomaso to do is to actually create, um, a list similar to this, but where we can put this, the status for every person, like they've, they have been contacted, they have confirmed, they have sent in the video. So yeah, I'm waiting for Tomazo to come up with that. And then we can, then we can do like um, a focus chase up and not just spam everyone because someone who's already sent in everything doesn't need to receive another prompt, right? Mm -hmm. Do you all so have yeah, them? I have the same question as LC is asking now. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see it. Wait. Um, what's Chelsea's call? Oh, did I send it privately? Oh, um, so how, how are each, how is each host going to be able to, um, like access the Zoom? Did we figure that out because, you know, oh, we're doing I'm... a 24 hour stream. So are we just using your account and like everyone's getting like a login for that day to host? Okay. Or how, does, how does that Actually, work? Actually, that is really great. You brought up this question, so I have no idea and what, I'm going to try and do now is I'm going to see if I can make someone a co-host. Let me see. So I'm going to try and make, do you want to make Carlos the co-host? Yeah. So I've made Carlos. I'm going to make all of you co-hosts. This is the first time I'm doing this because I, okay. So I can actually make all of you co-hosts. So if you go on to click, if you click on manage participants and you open it up, you'll see that you've all got your names with co-host next to oh. Right. Means, um, do, do you, I'm going to try and stop the recording and um, you let me know if you, you're seeing the recording button. Hang on, I'm going to stop.